Hey there, I'm Brittany Flammer and I'm gonna show you how to use Excel for your budgeting. You can grab the same exact template I'm using in this video from my shop for just a couple of dollars where everything's calculated for you, or you can use this video to help you create your own template. The template includes income, expenses, debt payoff, sinking funds, as well as a net worth tracker. If you prefer to use Google Sheets, then I have a video linked in the description box down below where you can see how I use Google Sheets. When you first open the spreadsheet, the very first tab is a template tab. And what you want to do is you want to customize this to you and your specific situation. And then once you've customized it, you will copy it each month for your new budget. I'm going to walk you through exactly how I would do it for me and for my family if I were starting from scratch. Before we even do anything, if you open it up and the coloring is off and you don't like it, let me show you how to change the coloring you can select say we want to change these colors to home and then this bucket you choose what color you want so let's say we want this orange color whatever you choose what color you want because when i created it it looks great on my screen but then if you open up on a different computer it looks awful so that's how you change the colors but let's start with income we have my husband has income so i'm going to type his name and i have an income since we don't have a third income, we can delete this row. To delete it, we'll select over here to the left of it, right click and delete. All of the rows and columns in bold have formulas. So you can see this row here, this row's bold, this row's bold, this column. The bold means that it has a formula. So you wanna to try to avoid deleting the rows that have bold in them because you don't wanna delete the formulas. Let's move on to expenses. Um, donation, if you don't donate anything, just delete it. We do, but we call it tithing, so I'm gonna rename it. We don't have rent, we have a mortgage. Electricity, our city bill, car insurance, these expenses are just common ones that most people have. If you don't have them, then delete them or change them to what you do have. If you find that you are missing something, then I'm gonna show you how to add a row. Um, I realize we are missing, what are we missing? We're missing life insurance, so I wanna add that in. So I'm gonna come where I want to add it in, select to the left of the row, right click, and insert. When you're adding rows, you don't wanna add the very top or the very bottom because it won't be included in the formula. This formula right here only comes through here. So if we add right up here at the very top, you see the formatting's all off and it's not gonna be included in the formula. So we wanna make sure we add in the middle. Anywhere in the middle is fine. We'll add life insurance. But if you notice right over here, there are no formulas. So we have to drag the formula down. I can select this formula, see the little green box, pull it down, just drag it down. And same for this formula, and just drag it down. And keep going. I like to keep fixed expenses separate from variable expenses because the fixed expenses, I don't have much control over, there's only so much I can do, but variable expenses I have lots of control over. So I like to keep them separate. If you don't like to do that, you can just delete the variable expenses. Select right over here, right click, delete, and just keep all of your expenses together. Um, but I do like to keep them separate, so I'm gonna keep that. Groceries, eating out, entertainment, um, let's see, cutting for clothing. But I don't need these other two, so we're gonna select these two rows, right click, delete. Now let's go to the debt category. For the debt, I'm doing a debt snowball, so I'm gonna list all of my debts, the smallest amount we owe to the largest amount. So debt, our first debt is a credit card and it has a 12% interest rate, and it automatically ha is formatted for the percent, and the balance on that is 500. The second debt is a car loan, and the, balance, the percent there is six, and we owe 5,000. The third is a student loan, it's 6%, and we owe 12,000. But we don't have any other debt, so we're gonna go ahead and delete these rows. Select, right click, delete. Now, I will show you how to work the debt section um, as we go forward and I actually budget for a month, um, but right now we're just customizing it. Now on to savings. These are like sinking fund savings. So let's do, we've got emergency fund, and we'll type the beginning balance. We have 5,000 in there. Our vacation fund, we have 200. Our car fund, we're saving up for a new car. 
as 100. And we don't have another one, so we can delete, select to the left, right click, delete. Now we have completely customized it to us. We are going to make a copy. So we come out here to the template, right click, and click move or copy. This will pop up. Um, we want to, I want to move it to the end. If you like to have it the newest month up front, you can move it to the before template. But I'm gonna move it to the end, create a copy, click OK. Now it automatically pops, copies it, and it's called template two. But I want to rename it for the month. Um, we're gonna pretend that we're getting ready to do our budget for January. So I'm gonna name it January. Now it is time to do our budget for the month. What we do at the very beginning of the month, we set our budget, how much we think we're going to make and how much we think we're gonna spend. And then at the end of the month, we come through and type in the actual amounts we spent and see how we did at the end of the month. Um, so I'm just making up numbers to show you how this works. We're gonna say James makes 4,000 and I make 500. And once you type in numbers for the income, all of the formulas automatically populate for you. Um, and it automatically does a total. So our total income is 4,500. Now tithing, we're just gonna say 500, mortgages, 1,400, electricity, 100, uh, city, life insurance, 50, car insurance, internet, phones, Oh, we have internet on here twice, so I'm just gonna come through, right click, delete it. And if I do that, I'd wanna go back and delete it on the template too. Um, gas, 250. Now, we are using a zero-based budget, which means we want our total money in to equal our total money out. So it's automatically totaling how much money we have coming in, it's 4,500, and it's automatically gonna total our money going out as we budget it. So our goal is to have the difference between the two, zero. We're telling every dollar where it should go. It's, there's a quote, tell every dollar where it goes or you wonder where, it, tell your money where it goes or wonder where it went. The quote goes something like that. Um, but we're assigning it a job. So our goal is to get that down to zero. So we've got all of our total fixed expenses right there. And groceries, we are gonna say 600. Uh, eating out 100, entertainment 100, clothing 50. So I can see here my total variable expenses is $850. However, if I get that $850 at the beginning of the month and I try to make it last, it's gonna last, I'm gonna run out before the month is over. So I personally like to do a weekly budget. Um, the fixed expenses are monthly. I don't have much control over those, but the variable expenses are the ones I do have control over. So I automatically divide it by weeks. So if the month has four weeks, and so instead of having 850 for the month of January, I will have $212.50 each week. Um, if you don't like to do that, you can just delete the weeks. You don't have to do it. I just personally like to do it. So it automatically calculates for me right there. Now let's move on to the debt category. I'm gonna type in for my budget, I'm just gonna type in the minimum amount I have O on each of these debts. So the credit card minimum balance is 50 every month. The car loan is 300 and our student loans 350. So I'm gonna type those in and then we'll come back and adjust it. But this is the beauty of a zero based budget. Um, so I can see I have $290. So we're left for the month to budget out. So let's say we're putting 100 towards our emergency fund and we're putting 50 to our vacation, 50 to our car. So I still have $90 left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and add that to my first debt, my credit card. So 50 plus 90 is 160. No, I can do math. 50 plus 90 is 140. <laughs> so you can see here the dash in Excel means a zero. So we've got it down to zero. So we're gonna pay the minimum amount on all of our debts, except for we're gonna pay the most possible on that credit card, on the smallest, so we can get it paid off first, fast. Um, so now that I've got the budget for the month, we go through the month, spend our money, and at the end of the month, we are going to type in how we actually spent it. Income, my husband is salary, so he made the exact amount, but I thought I would make 500, but I actually ended up making 600. So you can see here, it's automatically calculating how much I'm either over or under. The dash means zero, so I made exactly what we thought. But in this column, this category, the over under, positive is always good, negative is always bad. It's formulated, so it's positive good, negative bad. So this 100 is positive. I made 100 more than we thought, so that's awesome. Um, but then let's say we spent 
600 for tithing instead of 500. So that parentheses is negative in Excel. I don't like the negative. It's really hard to see. So I like to do the parentheses. So that means negative. So I went, so negative is bad. So I went over $100. Um, mortgage, right on. Uh, electricity, we went over. Water was good. Life insurance is fixed. Car insurance fixed. Internet fixed fixed phones fixed gas we were under so i can see here the overall fixed expenses i went over 110 dollars so i got to make that up somewhere so we spent under on groceries and under on eating out but we went over on entertainment and then clothing we were under so you can see here i have a positive 105 so that's good we have 105 extra dollars so that's awesome so now let's go to our debt category again we paid 140 for our credit card and the end balance is not calculated for you because a lot of times there are fees associated with your debts and i can't predict those so we can't add that in so what you're supposed to do is just type in the ending balance so we're just going to say the ending balance after you've made your payment is 400 dollars and after making the and then we paid the 300 on the car loan so the ending balance we're going to say is 4800 and for our student loan we paid 350 and the ending balance is 11800 so we are just going to type in the end balance but then for the next month you can just copy select it control c and then come over here and paste control v or paste the for the next month so you don't have to type it all back in the way that the sinking funds or the savings category works we type in how much we put in so for emergency fund we put in a hundred but we maybe got into a car accident and had to replace some tires so we had to spend five hundred dollars out of our emergency fund so the end balance is automatically calculated for you it takes the beginning balance what you already had in there it adds how much you put in and it will subtract how much you spent so you do not have to type in a negative when you spend the money it's all positive it will subtract that for you and it will automatically give you your ending balance um, vacation fund uh, same we put 50 in but we didn't spend anything and our car fund we're just putting 50 in for buying a new car so our ending balance is automatically calculated for us but if we look we have 95 extra dollars so what I'm gonna do is I'm trying to pay off that debt as fast as possible I'm gonna go back into our debt that credit card and I am going to add the $95 make an extra payment or add to that first payment so I cannot do math. 140 plus 95 is 235. So I'll type in the 235 and I will have down to a zero balance. For your sinking fund, the end balance is automatically calculated for you. In, for the next month, if you don't want to have to retype it, you can copy it, control C, but then you don't want to just paste it. You have to do a special paste. So right click, paste special, the clipboard with the number. You just want the values only. You just want the numbers. You don't want the formula for the next month when you start a new month. If you want to see how I do this every single month with our own budget, I do a video at the beginning of the month showing you our budget, a video at the end of the month showing you how we did for the month, as well as updating our net worth. So make sure you're subscribed and check out those videos. Thanks so much. See you in the next video.